My name is Matt Jones, I'm a neuroscientist based in the School of Physiology, Pharmacology and Neuroscience here in Bristol. Well, as you appreciate, our brains are pretty complicated machines. They're processing lots of different types of information at any given time. And to achieve that, they have lots of specialised brain regions which have evolved and developed to preferentially process different aspects of our lives. How, what we find rewarding, what makes us sad, what we want next, all that kind of information. But for our thought process to come together, all these different parts of the brain have to coordinate their activity. So we try and um, understand how that activity is coordinated by recording from multiple brain um, regions, either in a behaving rat or in a behaving human, to uh, relate the neural activity to behaviour and to assess how different brain regions co-vary their activity together and communicate information with one another. So we run experiments in two different species, either rats or humans, and we try and design the experiments so that they can run in parallel in the two species. So we take a rat and we implant arrays of recording electrodes into its brain. These are microscopic little metal electrodes. So we can monitor the activity of individual brain cells or neurons as that rat is behaving or as that rat is sleeping. And then we try and do the same in human participants, either healthy participants or sometimes patients. So we'll put arrays of recording electrodes on the scalp of these people, ask them to perform tests of learning and memory, and then let them sleep and quantify how the brain activity relates to those different behavioural states. We um, firstly are faced with a fascinating paradox. How is it that brain activity, which is changing millisecond by millisecond, could give rise to our stable perceptions of the world? But we're also interested in the translational the medical application of this work. So in brain disorders like schizophrenia or depression where the thought process goes wrong, um, we need to understand that thought process in order to fine-tune it and fix it in those patients. So some of the work we're most excited about at the moment is that using a rat model of schizophrenia, we discovered that during sleep, the activity at the front of that rat's brain and the activity at the back of its brain became discoordinated, so the front and back of the brain weren't talking to each other properly during sleep. We then turned to some collaborators at Harvard Medical School in the US and found that analysing data from schizophrenia patients, we found a very similar phenomenon, so the front and back of their brains weren't coordinating properly during sleep. So at present, we're trying to understand the cause of that abnormality, and once we've done that, we can try and develop ways to treat it. Well, our work on sleep really captures the imagination because everyone appreciates how important sleep is. It's a really precious state and I say that, you know, as a father of young children, it becomes really important to me. So um, if we can help people understand how to sleep better and potentially develop ways to control brain activity during sleep to improve sleep quality without people having to spend longer asleep, then I think that could have real benefit to society. Mm -hmm.